Well, good morning. This is Tampa Home Talk, and we've got another great hour in store for you today. Uh, today's topic is going to be all about five big reasons why you need to sell your home this year, because it's actually going to get a little bit tougher as we move through 2019. And we're going to talk about some of the things that we've seen in the field this week, which directly pertain to exactly what we're talking about. Um, and I figured before we dive too deep in today's <laughs> content, Adam, it's so on point that I just want to, I, I love to talk about the life stories, right? Like whatever happens in the week, we talk about it on Friday. It's how we get all of our content. Absolutely. So well, my of course. sister, my, this wild story, you're going to love it, but I want to know how it's going to pertain with regards to the insurance. Cause I thought who better to ask than Mr. Adam Talley, right? Uh, but my sister was in a car accident last week, so she's okay. But let me tell you the details about the car accident. So basically she was right there by the outlet mall on 54 okay waiting in that long line of traffic that's always right there to get on the interstate mm -hmm. and uh this car was trying to avoid another car that was ready to hit hit them it was a big land rover mm -hmm. smashes into the whole back side of her hits her at about 45 miles an hour mm -hmm. plows into the car in front of them and the car in front of them and the car in front of them so you got five or six cars wow that are involved in this so to make matters better and you know, for those of you out there, just be nice. Like your insurance is there for that reason. So apparently the girl driving the car was, it wasn't her car. Of course. She was a nanny and the nanny had just dropped off the kids. So thank goodness the kids weren't even in the car, mm -hmm. but basically the nanny caused this whole domino reaction. It wasn't even her car. And on top of that, I guess the guy that owns the car who has the kids mm -hmm. uh pulls up doesn't even ask to see if the kids are in the car first and basically says i'm not paying for any of this was like the first thing he said and uh yeah that didn't go over so well by most of the people there but anyway um just want katrina, to give her, on that. <laughs> katrina give her this number before you get those thoughts 727-461 help papa and guy i knew you would chime in right on that <laughs> is that a chiropractor because everyone in that accident needs a chiropractor yeah no, they're, they're, they're a personal, personal injury. injury law firm that can help you out. 727-461-HELP. So we'll definitely get her connected with Papa and Gype. Um, so, and the interesting thing, too, it would have been her second day on the job. Mm -hmm. So she was um, new. So she got her first day, right, in paid training. So she just had her first day on the job. Insurance company, mind you. But anyway, so now she's on her way to work for the second day. And now because of this accident, she, mm -hmm. she literally, anyway, she has hydrocephalus, which is water on the brain. So she has shunts that go down both sides of her head. And her head was swollen a little bit on this side. So is it the nanny or? No, my sister. Oh. Yeah, my sister. So she's okay, but she, I think the she has a torn. That's the most important thing. She thinks yes. she has a torn, like, um, ACL or something in her leg. Okay. And I don't She's still getting checked out. But anyway, yeah. so now she can't even start working until June. Mm -hmm. And her car is totaled. Absolutely totaled. Older car only has PFP and liability. Oof. So let's talk about this scenario. Like, <laughs> like you know, the... Let's talk about everybody from the car, right? The person's car or someone else is driving it mm -hmm. and it's not even their car. And then how does that work? Is that what they call stacking? Like, is that, is this where this comes into no, play? No, so stacked. You got five cars? Yeah, no. So stacked is uh, unrelated to, to this. So stacked uh, is related to uninsured motorist coverage. And basically what it is, is you take whatever your un uninsured motorist limits are and multiply it by however many cars you have. So if you have, let's just make it easy. If you have 50, 100 coverages, you have three cars and let's say it's uh, stacked coverage, then you'd have 150, 300. So it multiplies per car. It does. It's not, you know, we don't usually see the stacked as common, uh, but that's really just related to one person's policy. Now, it'd be interesting to know what kind of insurance they have, right? Because then we could break that down a little bit more, but this is the unknown. Uh, yeah. And I guess the question is more like, if this is you, right? Mm -hmm. If you're one of the five cars, um, or you let your nanny drive your car, like. <laughs> so there's a couple things at play here. So like, uh, you know, normally, right? Like, let's say I let you borrow my truck because you need to, you know, move something, move something right? Course. It's common. Yeah, I get that call all the time. Own a truck, pretty much. Yeah. Um, it's like a boat, right? Yeah. Exactly. Everybody else I need uses to move my it. Uh, <laughs> Who has a truck? So if I let you borrow my car and you got in an accident in it, you know, with you having your own insurance and it was, you know, kind of an incidental type of use, um, you know, it'd kind of go to you as a driver. 
Okay. Okay. Um, now, in this scenario, because the nanny is actually working for them. Yeah. Right? So, depends on how they have that set up. I mean, do they even have a commercial policy on there uh, I would, I'm going to say no is that a good guess right would probably you say not I would just say I would say they probably don't but if she was driving while working for him then you know I would think that he would have some some liability so how does that work for a nanny like isn't that kind of like a babysitter right like they come over you pay them yeah I, I know, think whatever nannies the are nannies are closer to full-time employees though from the ones that I know they're they're working you know 10 hours a day, three to five days a week. You know, I think they'd be independent contractors. They, right. They, they basically, I mean, we need a tax attorney here to, to find a nanny as an employee or an independent contractor. I know. You know, I don't, maybe we'll tag a deer in mission or live yeah. Facebook yeah. stream and see if he can actually chime in on it. Maybe, uh, maybe Pat can reach out to him. Yeah. Well. Cause I, uh, it, it, it's going to be a mess. Let's start, let's start there. It's probably going to be a mess just due to the number of cars and the fact that, the owner of the vehicle wasn't the one driving. Well, we know it's a mess, but I'm asking you to stuff. break it down. Yeah. So, I, so uh, I got a question. Is the insurance on the vehicle itself or is the insurance on the – or is the driver carry the insurance? So, I mean, what I'm talking about is like if it was not my car mm -hmm. that I was driving, are there other two policies to go after? One for me as the driver, one for the car owner? Yeah, like how does insurance work? So – Okay. Is it all the you same? Have, well, you have two different, two pretty much two different questions there. Um, y the policy itself is really unlike you know a homeowner's policy where it's really geared towards the house, and then the you know buyer is more of secondary on the rating. The auto insurance is opposite, right? So if you're looking at how your rate is composed, it is ninety percent you as a driver and your location and then 10% the vehicle and everything. Okay. So in this area or mm -hmm. in this scenario, right? Let's right. say the area is amazing, right? They're driving a Land Rover. They got a nanny. So mm -hmm. I imagine the area is fine. A land what? Land Rover? <laughs> land Rover. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did I say? I, well, I was know. just talking about rate. It has nothing to do with coverage as far know. as. Wait, backtrack. Location. Okay. So what'd you say again? Because he was Is asking about, I, th I thought he was more asking about. Then there's two it's... policies to go after one for the driver, one for the vehicle. The driver would be first. Awesome. So, so the nanny's I, I'm first. Gonna, let's just say the nanny probably has, what if she has like a, a PIP and liability policy? Very basic. Well, what's the minimum policy coverage you can So get? the minimum you can have is you can have PIP, which is personal injury protection, um, and property damage. So that's not even liability. That's so, just so property damage. So let's say damage. nanny has a cash car right? Mm -hmm. She's in college. Her job is to be a nanny mm -hmm. and she's just making her way through whatever her career path is. So right. she's got basic coverage like a lot of kids mm -hmm. would in college. But she would actually need the commercial policy. No. So the... You're asking a lot of questions. Back I know. You are. So no, the, the, the commercial policy... So really the... I'm going to guess the and reason say they probably why, don't. Yeah. The reason why the... Um, the reason why the car owner in this case might have some culpability is the fact that, you know, it's an employee at a certain, you know, extent driving that vehicle, right? And if not, let's just say it's on a personal lines auto policy, which I'm sure it is. So if that's the case, but you have somebody that's regularly driving your vehicle, mm -hmm. that person that's regularly driving the vehicle should be listed on the policy as a driver because they have regular access. So let's say, so let's say they're not, let's say they're not. Like I said, you know, they're, the attorneys are going to do their job, of but course. I would assume that there's going to be a little, are you bit saying of, insurance is going to try to deny that whole claim? Maybe. No. I mean, it, it depends. Honestly, everybody, is probably going to be using their PIP first because that's to... So each car, each car, each car. Each car is going to use their own PIP for them. Mm -hmm. uh, Personal injury protection, Yeah, because right? that protects you. Um, and it depends on how you have that set up. So, um, you know, you have different deductible options and sometimes you don't have to include work loss. So if you try to go as low as you possibly could, you, you might not have the coverage you need. So are there are likely two insurance companies at fault. Like back to Leo's question, uh, try to go after the nanny for whatever she's. I would. Just, got. They're going to look at the nanny first as a driver. Um, then you'll have the vehicle owner as well. Um, 
and then you're going to have all the individual car owners insurance as well so there could be you know a ton of companies we, we call that a gold mine for an attorney yeah <laughs> it sounds like a freaking mess it if you is ask me. a mess cool. which is a other like phrase it. for gold mine yeah. for an attorney yeah. yeah they got a lot of a lot of layered stocks there yeah. i guess it's like a real estate agent buying and selling five houses maybe right yeah <laughs> all right this is katrina madewell here with adam talley and leo kane we will be back when we come back we're going to talk about five big reasons to sell your home this year before we actually leap into summer we'll be back in just a minute well good morning welcome back this is leo kane with adam talley and katrina madewell we are talking about a gold mine for an attorney this morning <laughs> sort as, of. We, as we have a six car accident using an employee or an independent we're contractor. trying to figure that part out right <laughs> we're right, now trying right. to figure out how many insurances this law firm can tap into um and speaking of tapping in this is a great year to sell your home and they tap into love that, that transition and there. this is that a was great fantastic. year to sell your home and tap into that piggy bank that you're sitting on absolutely and uh we're going to talk about that and it's interesting because you know there's there's a lot of um there's a couple of stories that are going to go hand in hand with what we're talking about today so we just ha have five really big reasons why it's a good time to sell so I look at this font I, this is like 14 point font i know right That's big reasons so the number one the first reason is you won't actually be listed long and so the point behind that is a lot of people might be waiting till closer to the end of the school year closer to summertime and so what happens is in a market like we've been in, which has been a seller's market for a very long time now, we're shifting into a balanced market and, you know, could be a buyer's market before anybody realizes it's happened, right? So with that being said, if you list in that market as opposed to this market right here, you're going to be on the market longer. So think about what that's like, right? You spend all this time to plan, prepare, get your home ready, and then essentially, uh, you know, every time you have a showing, we're asking you to vacate your home for about an hour. Sometimes that's at dinner time. Sometimes it's often on the weekends. And then the seller's like, gosh, well, can I just come home this weekend and like relax, you know? So in a perfect world, we'll talk about one of the listings that we had, that we talked about last week that's already sold and how great that went down in a minute. Nice. Um, but in a perfect world, you want to make that happen as quickly as possible, right? To minimize it's a, you know, what's a good word for it? It's not displaced, but it's a, it's a real inconvenience. Like there's gotta be a better word for it, but it's a super inconvenience to have to vacate time and time and time again. And if this goes on for weeks, it really taxes the sellers. Like we see them really just get drained. It's exhausting. Well, I mean, yeah, especially if you've staged your home and you've packed up your personal belongings and it doesn't yeah. feel like your home anymore. Well, you have maybe a, a fourth or an eighth of the stuff that you would normally have, you know? So it's not a real big deal in the short term, but the longer it is, the bigger deal it is, right? So you might be looking for something you might only use once a month or every two months. Plus you're trying to get back into that rhythm of living in your home, So right? do you think on most of the listings that you do, do you see more where the people are, it's kind of like a buy sell type of thing. They're in there until they can sell and then they're moving somewhere else or are they moving first and that, that home's vacant? Great question. Sometimes, and it depends, right? So uh, sometimes people are like, well, we don't know what we can get for our home. And so that's where we come in because we're going to be able to give you a really good idea on if you price it right, what you're going to net. And then the next question is, well, what can I buy for that? That's what then my budget. Budget, right so then we start that whole search and then I normally I'm a personal favorite of let's go ahead and get them out there let's get the sellers looking at other properties let's get them emotionally attached to one for one <laughs> and for two then they can visually kind of see where they're going right mm -hmm. because the problem is when you list a house it's someone's home and so you got to make that transition from their home to a house, right? And so there's nothing better, especially for a seller that's getting their planning, right? And preparing to go on the market. And we tell them, remove all your personal photos, less is more, too much clutter is not good. So then we walk into one of these homes, right? That has pictures on the wall and they can't help it. We'll catch them right in the middle of the act going, hey, what are you doing? Oh, I, I can't help it. I'm just was looking to see who that was. Like you always, it's, it's human nature we're curious right, we want right. to know who's living in the home why they're moving you know all these you don't even think about it but unconsciously the human mind works that way well, You're the why about question it. is a pretty important one if this is a beautiful home in a great neighborhood why am i moving well, that's it's so, I'm so glad you asked that, Leo, because before we jump in and work with anybody, 
I always find out why I'm there. So we're going to ask very deep, thought-provoking, insightful questions. You know, these are the type of the questions that most people, they don't know the answer to. So it takes them a few minutes to think about that and then give us a response. And then it's my goal and my team's goal to craft a very specific process around their needs. So unless we know really what's important to them, it's hard to help them through the process. So people don't just wake up and go, hey, I want to move today. It's a beautiful home, nice neighborhood. I'm, I feel like moving. Uh, people, you sound like you sound like like back when I sold cars for a summer in college. It was like people just don't come to the car lot to test drive cars. They're in the market to buy something. Valid point, <laughs> right? Totally valid though. It's really anything you do that takes a lot of time. That's a big inconvenience. You're not just going to dabble in it, right? Plus, yeah. it's the most expensive thing you're going to buy. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. I mean, you're it, you're doing it for a reason. And it's not you know it's right up there with that divorce and taxes. It's not fun. You know, to pack your whole house up and oh. vacate and have everything rearranged and inside out and, you know. And then when you're unpacking, you throw half of it away. I mean, well, you know, I'm a woman. Obviously, you guys have wives. But, I mean, you know, we might leave things like our bras out or shoes or whatever. And you can't have that stuff out when your house is listed. Like, you just can't live in it like you would. Does that make sense? Yeah. It means I can't walk around naked in my own house if it's listed. <laughs> Good. I wouldn't recommend it, but, you know, I've seen just about everything in this day and age. Literally walked in on a tenant one time totally naked. Awesome. Had an appoint approved appointment. Didn't tell him, like, hi, we're here to show the house. But you yeah. don't knock on the door really loud? Yes, we did. And then, like, apparently he was in the bedroom, maybe sleeping, barely heard us, walked out. That's hilarious. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Can you put that thing away? That's, that is <laughs> hilarious. Wow. Can we segue into our off-air number off that? Yes, that's a great idea. Eight one, we'll, we'll prepare you for that so that's not happening. Eight one three, three seven seven two seven seven five. That's eight one three three seven seven two seven seven five. You know, my goal is really just Text to make knock this first, easy. Uh, <laughs> to eight one three, two seven uh, three seven seven two seven seven five. We just want to make it easy. We we know that if you're thinking about a move, there's a reason, right? House is too big, too small, not right. Something's going on that makes you want to move. Well, I teach that to my wholesalers during uh, my wholesaler sessions is I basically say you need to find the motivation on the seller. Right. If you can't find the motivation, you're never going to close your own deal to get the listing. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and you'd be surprised how many listing agents walk into a deal and have no idea really why they're there. Great. You want to sell your home? Okay, great. Sign here. We'll go ahead and stick a sign in the front yard, a lockbox in the door, and we'll get this done. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Now, now, question for you, because you, you know, you also specialize in, you know, helping people build the wealth with real estate. When you somebody calls you for a listing appointment, do you kind of go over with them, you know, what they could reasonably do if they kept it and rented it? Yeah, we do. I mean, that's, again, it goes back to why am I there? Like, why are right. we talking about selling, you know? And especially when we think about markets like we've had in the past, when people wanted to sell, right? They had that deep, innate desire to move for one reason or another, and they would have sold. Mm -hmm. um, they had to rent because they didn't have an option. Like, the market value wasn't there to sell it. Mm -hmm. So they were upside down, and they had to keep it as a rental. So the market turns, it always does, you know, and that's where we jump in and help them find a really well-qualified tenant. Um, that's going to pay the rent on time, treat their property right, and take care of it like we they should, would. We should get a property manager on this show to talk about it. Definitely. Because, you know, not all tenants are the same any more than landlords are the same, <laughs> right? Like, they're all different. Um, but, so that's what we'll do is, is talk about it. And I'm not, you know, when I go in for a listing appointment, if we have a different conversation and it's helping them find a rental, mm -hmm. you know, or helping them rent their home and basically buy another one, I'm okay with that. I love that. I love people wanting to build long-term wealth through real estate. Because you know what? When they have five, six, ten properties to sell, they're going to call me. Yeah. Or they're just going to keep buying more and they'll, yeah. they'll get you on the on the buy side. Exactly. You yeah, actually know a, a trust. Uh, he's a trustee or he runs trusts. Mm -hmm. And basically, occasionally, he'll show up and I've got, I've got a portfolio for sale. I'm like, that's awesome. He's selling five or ten properties at a clip. That's and, awesome. Because he's not selling the properties. He's selling the corporation. Got it. Yeah. I mean, it's a good way to just move everything kind of right quick. There. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of times those move through 1031s as well. And a 1031 exchange for those in the listener land that don't know is when you sell your property to buy other property tax-free. Yeah. Or deferred, tax-deferred. Yeah. Tax-free sort of-ish. You know, just, like, just keep kicking the can down the road. Yeah, exactly. Just keep kicking the can down the road, but yeah. it doesn't pass to your heirs. Right. So 
theoretically, you could defer kick it, it till you kick it in, infinitely, right? Till the end of your life. Um, all right. So number two on our list is you still will stand to make a nice profit, right? Um, so home prices have actually been on a ridiculous rise. I pulled some stats. Uh, some of these I got off realtor.com. And in January of 2012, the median home price was actually $154,700. Wow. And as of today, that figure's double at two eighty nine three hundred. This is nationwide, okay. everywhere. Yeah, no, you can't even buy, can't even buy a shed in Tampa for one hundred fifty four thousand dollars. No, I mean, but so this goes back to the time value of money, right? We talk about it all the time. Um, and so here are some indicators that we're moving into a cooling or a shifting market. In January, fifteen percent of all listings that were on the market had a price cut. So they're actually reducing the price to stay competitive to sell it so this goes back to you know what's, in the what's seller average for price cut mm -hmm. i mean it depends on where you're at right how big it is but i would suggest a minimum five percent minimum you know because if you don't reduce it enough to get a buyer's attention it doesn't make sense another little trick that we use too like let's say for example in this medium price, right? 289, 300. We've done everything we can to sell it. It's not sold. My suggestion in this one would be to reduce it at 275. The reason why is it's gonna open this home up to two different buyer pools. Everybody's searching between 250 and 275 and 275 to 300. So you can reduce it all you want in that 275 to 300 range. You're still talking to the same pool of buyers. So that's, that's what I mean by it. It's not always a straight percentage. We look at the whole thing. Plus, are there other comps? Right, right, that have sold that are similar, and what do those numbers look like? So, all right, this is Tampa Home Talk. We'll be back right after this break. Welcome back to Tampa Home Talk. I'm Adam Talley with Talley Insurance, joined by Leo Kane with Barrel Engineering and Katrina Madewell, Realtor Extraordinaire. And before we dive back into the five huge reasons why you're going to want to sell your home this year. We do want to get into our two-minute insurance tip of the day. And uh, what I want to discuss today is something I've seen a lot of activity on, and we are approaching hurricane season soon, and it is flood insurance. A lot of people think if they're not in an A zone or a V zone, which those are the mandatory flood zones, that they're not uh, subject to flood. But you know, we see a lot of flood claims happen in those X zones. Flood insurance is extremely affordable. Um, if you're if you are in an X zone, you're talking five six hundred dollars at the maximum. But the most important thing and why you want to start thinking about it now, there's a thirty day waiting period. Mm, so right. that means if you call me today and you want to get that policy started, it is not going to actually go into force until May twelfth. Now they have to have an elevation certificate, right or no? Uh, actually, no. So if you are in an A zone or a V zone, you, um, you definitely will want to get an elevation certificate unless um, you are in what's called a pre-firm uh, house. So pre-firm is going to be if your house was built before your community um, had flood started maps? utilizing the flood maps. You're right. So then you get kind of what a year was subsidized that? rate. You know? It's different for every community. Okay. Um, so that's you know that's one scenario where you wouldn't need it. Also, we have private market flood options available now. Finally, huh? Um, so those don't require them either. And then if you're in an X zone, you definitely don't need one. Um, the NFIP has slotted coverage, and then our private market insurers, honestly, they're giving you better coverage for less money. So that's the way to go these Good. days. Good. That's awesome. And then we have flood by endorsement now with some carriers. So What's that? Uh, so just like, you know, let's say you wanted sinkhole coverage and you just click the button to get the sinkhole coverage endorsement. It's just like that. So you actually add flood insurance as an endorsement to your homeowner's policy. So you got, you know, basically two policies combined into one. That's awesome. Yeah. And I, you can't have too much coverage. I think that one of the common misconceptions is people think that their homeowner's insurance covers flood. And it doesn't it, cover it doesn't. any type of rising water at all. Nope. So. Absolutely. So. Yeah, I've seen a lot of, uh, we get called in on, on a hurricane claim that has mm -hmm. a flood component, and I have to explain to them how we can't help them on the flood component because they don't have flood insurance. Oh, that's rough. Because that's they're rough. like, but it's the hurricane. And it's, like, it's, it's an awkward conversation for me. And then I can just wave my hands in the air and go, I'm not an attorney. Not that's, and then the attorney, attorney, that's a great guy. one to fall, fall back. I and would probably the, say that. Yeah, I'm and then the attorney, attorney tries to explain it, and they can't. So they wave their hands up in the air and go, not an insurance agent. Right. And then they call Adam. 
Right, and exactly. Adam says, too bad, so sad. I wish you would have called me like when we talked about it today. Yeah, well, hey, you know, every time a hurricane comes, I get the phone call. Hey, can I purchase flood insurance? I'm like, yes, I would love to put that in place for you, but it is not going to help you on this one. It'll help you on the next one. Yes. Now. So, again, if you've been thinking about selling, our off-air number is 813-377-2775, and it's, you'll still stand to make a great profit if you sell now. Don't wait to have that additional competition because then it's going to affect the price. You will get less. 813 813- 377-2775. All right. So there's also a really big demand for homes under 300,000. And so we see this as very, very true, especially the better the home condition is and the mm-hmm. more upgrades and features and benefits it has under 300,000, it's going to soar. Like it, it's just, you all have buyers lined up because it's under that medium price. So I'll give you a prime example. Remember the one on Bel Air Loop that we were talking about last mm-hmm. week for 225? Mm-hmm. So Great we spent... Price. We spent, we spent on average, I would say at least a month, sometimes more, sometimes less, mm-hmm. getting homes ready for sale, right? So all the planning, planning, preparation, ha, you know, the stager, there's a whole lot that goes into getting ready. So it's not uncommon for people to hire me. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we have a, a waiver of MLS entry, so it doesn't go in until they're actually ready. So this particular house... Um, we launched it live around Thursday, which is a lot of our strategy. We had agents already calling to show it and we're like, we're not opening up showings until Saturday because the seller really was finishing a few last minute little things. Mm, Nice. And so Saturday we did our open house from 11 to three and Jade out there got mobbed. Like she had, she had five people waiting on her when she got to the open house and there were so many people that came through it. We had 11 offers on that property. 11 offers. And when I pulled comps, we were at the high end of the range. Like I said, this home is really nice. We can definitely price at the upper end of the range of prices. So at 225, we were, you know, it's a smaller house. So it missed the radar for a lot of people, but it was so nice. And the floor plan was great. So 11 offers. Like What community was that in? It was in Lake Pageant Estates East. Awesome. That's awesome. So, so you're yeah. in Lake Pageant Estates Eats. Do you need to be calling Katrina? Yeah. <laughs> I live there too. So 11 offers. That's amazing. For 11 one offers. House. And I'm like, you know, usually how that conversation goes down with the seller is like, all right, um, we have 11 offers. And, we, and when that happens, we do a multiple offer spreadsheet. So it kind of like gives them the short and skinny of what's in each of those offers. Like, Give me the one with the highest price. Well, actually, it's so interesting. I can't tell you what the price was yet, but it was significantly above our list price. And they actually did not pick the highest one. Um, and it was it was VA, so it's a zero down, which means you're going to send a VA appraiser. Oh, and so I'm ready for the structural follow up. Yeah. Ah. Well, we were already high on, we were significantly above our list price, especially for that price point. And so when, when it came in as high as it did, I was like, I've got serious concerns that this is going to not appraise. Mm. Um, so we ended up taking a conventional offer with a good amount down. We see all kinds of stuff. Contingencies to sell your home. Nope, those are going away. Mm -hmm. In a competitive market, like if if there's more than one offer, especially more than two offers, don't ask for closing costs. Your offer is not going to get accepted. You can almost bet money. Mm -hmm. It's not going to get accepted. Take that out. Remove that layer. You have a better chance of getting accepted. Wow. Yeah. So anyway, um, so the demand under 300000 if you're in that price point or anywhere close, it's a really, really good time to think about it. You want to uh, get pr- plan right now, you know, and the biggest challenge and the biggest resistance I would say I get when I go out on a listing appointment or if I'm trying to schedule with somebody, they keep putting it off. The biggest thing is they feel like they have to have their house ready for me. I get that a lot so much. And I'm like, look, the first visit with me never counts. Like, it's my job to make all this happen. And so I think our sellers are pretty surprised in how, what our process is. Well, and then you tell them the story about walking in on For the tenant. For years only, and their they, team mission you know, is watching. And they know they can't... Uh can't do any worse than that. So it's going to be good, right? Yeah, exactly. So 813-377-2775. That's our off-air number. And uh, we'll be happy to help you if you're looking to move in, move out, move up, help whatever that looks like for you or invest in real estate. Again, 813-377-2775. Um, the other thing too, like mortgage rates are, are, are low. So the interesting thing about this is last year, you know, they were saying mortgage rates are going to rise, going to rise, going to rise. And they did start rising. It had a, a not so nice impact on the stock market. So it seems like the feds kind of fixed that real quick, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So basically at the start of the year, you know, most 30 year fixed rates, and this is a national average, right? 
um, was higher. And so the last um, couple, like over the last 12 months, 4.375 is roughly where that number is. So it's went down a little bit compared to where it started at the beginning of the year. That's still dangerous to have the interest rates this low. It is. It is. And I've been telling people that for years because, you know, ultimately prices are not going to slow down. The market's going to cool. It's not going to crash and burn like people are thinking or saying or have mentioned so many times. But I mean, when I started out in this business, rates were 12% for perfect money. Like we've talked about this. And that, while I don't think we'll see 12% anytime at all in the near future, they can't really be where they are now. Because, you know, the whole point of the ecosystem, right, that we live in is the fact that investors need to have a safe place for their money. They want to make good returns and like 1% is not it. It's not enough to do anything. I would agree with that. Yeah, and also, if we end up in a recession or depression again, they typically have to lower rates by 5% to get us out. And if the rates are currently at 4.37, <laughs> we don't have the 5% no. to move. And that's that's where some of the other big money people that I listen to talk about the fear on the horizon. If we do hit one of those R's or D's in the future, we're not going to be able to use the rates to get us out of it. No, and they they have to. I mean, there's so many reasons why the rates need to go back up. Um, but the point is, it's going to reduce buyer's buying power because most people need a loan. And so when that happens, you know, it reduces what they qualify for. And so sellers that have to sell are going to adjust that price. Mm -hmm. right? The nice thing is when people need to buy and sell, they need to buy and sell. That's so right. there's always going to be, I always say like, for people who are like, well, if I wait another six months to move, I might get to, I'm like, well, you have to live somewhere. <laughs> yes. And that, that's the big thing. You have to live somewhere. So you can either buy now or you can pay six months of rent to someone else and just be wasting that money. Or you can buy now and maybe overspend by a couple of thousand. Yeah. I mean, it's, and in the grand scheme of things, think about that. Like a couple thousand dollars and the biggest purchase you're ever going to make, you're splitting hairs to fight over a couple grand. Well, and what's a couple grand over 30 years, right? Yeah. Per month. Like, I mean, you know, 10 bucks maybe. It's just, it's so small, right? Compared to the grand scheme of things. But like, people don't see it like that. Yeah. I know they don't. And it, it, we'll see properties like north of <laughs> almost a million bucks. And literally they'll have their feet planted firmly in the ground over $2,000. <laughs> I've seen that. Yeah. I'm like, do you really want to lose this deal over a $300 permit? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. I mean, we had it happen uh, earlier in this week. We had a, a, a buyer that was closing on a property and the tax bill was really low and the assessment was low. So I'm like, I know this is going to go up in November, just planning and preparing for them. And so it was an investor that was selling it and title always has their form. And they had it marked that it was a final proration of taxes. So we marked through it and said, no, we want to have the option to reprorate, mm -hmm. you know, when the actual bill comes out with no homestead. And, uh, the investor put his feet in the ground and said no, and he almost lost the deal. Like the, the buyer was almost like, wow. well, if he wants to be firm and he's been awful to deal with all of along, we'll just walk away, you know. But that's, again, where a good agent like me, which they tried to cut my commission, and I said no because it didn't appraise. I'm like, no, <laughs> no. And by the way, I just kept your deal together. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's just it's a, it's a cost versus value, right? So the ones like the listing agent on that deal – he just, he took, he's like, whatever, I'll just reduce it. It's no big deal. I have other listings for him. And there's times maybe, mm -hmm. right, that we might be in that position, but I don't know. It's, it's worth, your negotiating skills alone have to be worth what you're paid, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, prime example in that other, when we had multiple offers, we went so high above the list price that essentially now the seller's not even paying me because we went above what he was even right. thinking he was going to net. As long as you can appraise. We will. I mean, he's got enough upgrades, and I speak appraiser. That's true. <laughs> speak appraiser language. So we usually have a nice little list of upgrades that the home has had. When those were done, why it matters. We're looking at other comparables. I know how those line item adjustments work. So if they adjust up the wrong way, we usually talk about that. So, all right. We will save our last tip, number five, for five big reasons why right now is the time to sell because it can actually cost you if you wait. And uh, we'll share number five when we come back right after this last break. Our off-air number is 813-377-2775. You can call or text us, 813-377-2775. And you can connect with any of us on that number, 813-377-2775. Which real quick, before the break, if you're thinking of selling, hire Leo and his team for a pre-listing inspection. It'll be the best 
money that you spent because <laughs> you can fix that stuff before the buyer finds it so don't especially in a um in a more balanced market or a buyer's market you could actually lose a buyer over that and that's mm -hmm. the last thing you want to do all right we'll be back right after this break well good morning welcome back this is tampa home talk i'm leo kane one of your hosts with adam tally and katrina madewell we are talking about Wow, we've, we've talked about so much. We've talked about traffic accidents. We've talked about uh, why you should list your home now as opposed to a year from now. Nonetheless, we're glad you're here. We're glad you're listening to us. Yeah, and we've got, we've got a great number five topic. And I have a great joke when you announce the topic. <laughs> okay, so number five on our list. Uh, <laughs> it's a great one. Before I tell you what or who, historically speaking, people tend to buy their first homes around age 30. You're dodging my joke. I am. You're, oh, that's not fair. All right. So number five, millennials are actually expecting to be flooding the home buyer market. Can I get insurance against that? <laughs> <laughs> Got to wait 30 days. It's flood. <laughs> I waited all hour for that. Oh, man. All right. So typically around age 30-ish is when people buy their first home. Is that what you're waiting for, Adam? I'm, I'm, I'm you're already, already there. there. Yeah. <laughs> Around age 30, you know, Close. you guys are a little Close. bit late bloomers. Um, so there's a whole bunch of people turning 30 in the next two years. And those are the millennials. I that thought we're the talking millennials about. waited. No, this wasn't the joke I was planning on, but I, I thought millennials at age 30 move into their parents' basement for the first time. They did. And they're probably saving money to buy a house. <laughs> oh, good call. I mean, think about that. I Granted, I wasn't 30 when I bought my first house, but I did live on my own originally. I was in an apartment. And then I actually moved back home for about, I don't know, over a year, less than two years to save money to buy a house. Save money for my down payment because I knew I was buying. And I was way younger than 30. <laughs> you had your first house when you were 21, didn't you? Uh, something like that, yeah. yeah. Around 21, mm -hmm. maybe 22. 22 yeah. yeah, something yeah. like that. And I actually wanted to buy it when I was 18, but I didn't even really know what a mortgage was at 18. So Back then you, know. you can buy houses without mortgages. Well... It was, no, it wasn't that time. Oh, it wasn't. <laughs> I'm a little older than that. Oh. <laughs> but, you know, well, and the time value of money was different. So you're referring to the cost? No, referring to like the uh, the, the, the slope of the, the, the 80s and 90s and when we yeah. had those big, big swings in the markets. I didn't buy during those times, like high inside, of course, right? I definitely, mm. definitely would have. But um, aside from these millennials, right, that are getting ready to flood the market, um, you're also going to see older millennials basically in their mid to late 30s um, that have already owned a home for the last couple of years and they're looking to trade up, right? Maybe the family's getting bigger and it's time to move into that larger, more spacious home. So you could have a really, really good buyer pool you know, at this moment. And, and again, hence 11 offers on one property. <laughs> if you're priced right, now's the time to get in there, show it right, make it show amazing, and we'll help you get it sold. Our off-air number is 813-377-2775. 813-377-2775. Now, Katrina, you sell all over the Tampa Bay area. We do. As a matter of fact, like, you know, we talk about all the time how big the station reaches with Money Talk. Like, we literally stretch from Brooksville all the way into Manatee County and to the other side of the state. I literally have a listing appointment schedule from a Brooksville listener. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I know a lot of times we're doing inspections on some of your houses, and it, we're up in Brooksville. We're over in Riverview. We're in Brandon. We're in Land Lakes, Pinellas. Uh, Apollo Beach. Yes. Sun City Center, where we have to bring a golf cart. <laughs> You know, our, our, our listening audience is so big. We get some stuff from the radio. And then most of our business is repeat, referred, and past clients. So, you know, unlike the typical agent that maybe geoforms one particular neighborhood, that kind of puts us all over the map. But if you're one of our 35,000 active listeners right now, we really appreciate you and thank you. We do, and we love you. And uh, we always appreciate your feedback and your comments. We get some really great feedback. Uh, if there's something that you want us to cover, let us know. We would be honored to hear from you and know... Uh, uh, I don't know, just maybe a, whatever question, like home type question that you've bumped into that you want us to talk about or cover or bring some in, one in to talk about it, we will do that. I'm just amazed that uh, they loved us so much that we have a, such a strong listenership and I'm so appreciative of that that they gave us a second hour. I know. We're I know. so people. Well, so now, this is that second hour, by the way. But this second hour comes before our first hour, which is at 9 a.m. Yes. <laughs> 
So and we're honored. And again, it's not free. Thanks to our uh, sponsors and, you know, people like you guys that help support and put Tampa Home Talk on the air. And we only partner with amazing people, by the way. I feel like we just won an award. With <laughs> we were. I was actually I really talking. Good. I feel really good about this. I was talking to here. a plumbing contractor. No joke. And, um, you know, it just didn't go very well on a test run. And um, the sponsorship is totally off the table. Like we wouldn't support or endorse anybody we don't mm. love recommend and use personally hence leo and adam right i i love you guys i recommend you and i would absolutely and have use you personally now real quick question for you before we uh before we end this hour in regards to my fellow millennial brethren where are you seeing most of them purchase where oh a lot of them are you know right well they're mine i don't even need to tell you <laughs> is this urban core you already know they're looking right there seminole heights south urban core yeah now i did read an article in the tampa bay business journal where they're talking about extending the trolley line all the way through to tampa heights which would take it right by sure. right down franklin that yeah. would be which awesome. i think yeah i've read that for amazing. years you know the more walkable the more commutable without a vehicle our city becomes the more valuable it becomes to 100%. people that are going to live here and honestly i kind of love that area like i moved out of tampa when i had kids but my kids are almost grown and i'm ready to like be young again and live back in that area we need guys. a monorail yeah, mon yeah that's one of the things though because i'm so not used to having mass transit when my wife and i travel to big cities we we walk everywhere and we forget to use buses and we forget to use subway because we don't have we don't we don't have that here. So I don't we don't, even, that I was us in Chicago. We walked everywhere. <laughs> it's like, it's right. the worst place to walk everywhere. I wouldn't know how to use a subway, really. I've never... It's like, a map. You, the, 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 the trick it's is... It's kind of like a train. The, I guess. The, the trick is you have to know where the stops are because on the yeah. sign, it's just going to tell you where the last stop is. So See, it's pretty much if I head in this direction, maybe they'll drop me off where I want to be. I'm trying to think, where was I? I think we had taken like a beach trolley or something and uh we just did it just to like explore and see stuff and not have to drive and they we got all the way to the end and the guy goes this is the end of the line i'm like oh okay great and he goes um you have to get off or repay or whatever i'm like oh okay we didn't know so we got off and like ended up wandering around having lunch got back on took it back yeah it's always fun when they're like the end of the line everyone they force everyone off and then half the people get back on yeah, well, you know, San Diego has an amazing transit system there. It goes pretty far, like all the way to the border north, and then their train system's pretty good. So we need that. We need we need. And so I'm all in favor of the trolley doing like the lightning or in the playoffs. So the trolley gets you to and from those garages. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to go see the two cellos um, on Saturday <gasps> night. You are. I got tickets on Black Friday. Is that? Wait a minute. That's, that's the Amway. cello brothers. That yes. You... <gasps> they were actually. They, we actually. Used You're going. That's Saturday. Yeah. This is Saturday. I'm so used... mad. I wanted to see them. Oh well, they probably still have tickets. Do they? I'm going to be in San Diego. <laughs> oh, that's true. That oh true. my that's God. Right. You're you leaving right to, after the show. You just need to give. Leo, Leo some money, I'm so and he mad. can do Black Friday shopping well, yeah, online I, I for that. They, I use them as the wedding music. Them and Lindsey Sterling were a, a majority of the music we They're used in so our wedding. They're so cool. Maybe Pat can find some of their music when we come back for the next hour and play it, because it is pretty bad, you know what? Yes. The Cello Brothers, right? No, no, no I was thinking of, we're, did we, uh, this clock is messing me up. It's almost 9 o'clock. We're rolling into our second hour. <laughs> Isn't there a break between the two? Um, yeah, in just a minute. So we're <laughs> This is Tampa Home Talk. Remember, love where you live or we will fix it. Myself, Leo, Adam, and the rest of the gang. Our off-air number is 813-377-2775. We'll be back in about 15 minutes. <laughs>